In the western regions of the Ant Room, in the mystic kingdom known as the Plateaus of Gaia, a trapjaw ant searches tenaciously through the brush of the territories for a suitable place to bury her recently dead sister. But don't be alarmed by this dead ant. In our last video, featuring this ant kingdom, we created the Plateaus of Gaia to be a self-feeding system where we released a fattened colony of springtails to proliferate so that these trap giants, we call the jawbreakers, can hunt them down and feed themselves. But to my surprise, almost three months later, our springtails were nowhere to be seen. They had been overhunted, leaving our trap jaw ants without a food source. But hold on, what may surprise you is that the trap jaw ant colony is still alive, and furthermore, has in fact doubled in size. But how did they manage to remain alive all this time without the springtails on which their species specializes in eating? I look forward to showing you how, AC family. It's time to marvel at ant resourcefulness. Welcome everyone to the Ants Canada Ant Channel. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Welcome to the AC fam. Enjoy. All right, AC family, here's the thing. So it turns out our trap giants exhausted their own food supply. And to be fair, many of you guys expressed concerns about using springtails as a food source in our last video. I do like the self-sustained concept, but I doubt springtails and flies are enough to keep the colony fed. I just thought maybe it might be too hard for the jawbreakers to hunt springtails only. Will springtails be enough to sustain a big colony? I don't think the springtails are enough or reliable as a long-term main food source though. Are you sure the springtails will provide enough sustenance for the jawbreakers? I mean, they are hard to catch and they aren't that big. At the time, I wasn't worried because these ants are specialized at eating tiny insects like springtails in the wild and based on how prolific they'd been in our other ant kingdoms, I was confident our self-feeding Plateaus of Gaia biological engineering project was going to work out beautifully. But when I noticed that the springtails continued to dwindle down in numbers, despite me continually adding organics and even roaches, I began to fear that our plans had failed and the jawbreakers were on the brink of death. But guys, ants are survivors and the jawbreakers are no exception. They've doubled in size. Keep on watching until the end to find out where they've been getting their sustenance. In the rubble of the feeding pit lay the exoskeletal remains of cockroach carcasses, laid here in hopes to nourish the springtails which have now gone extinct in these lands. But peeking out from beneath the debris is a jawbreaker ant, greeting the fresh evening air. In fact, the jawbreakers have been quite busy excavating their underground fortress throughout the plateaus since we last saw them. I love the various nest entrances they've created, leading to their underground tunnels, like this one here, or these two entrances here and here. But the most active nest entrances are down in the feeding pit. Check them out. I noticed that the ants had created a canyon type nest structure allowing the ants to move in and out of various nest holes without actually being outside. Look at them in there. Now judging from the amount of ants I see at the surface, I estimate that the ant colony has definitely doubled in size, at least. Jawbreakers appeared pretty busy in those holes. And wait, do I see some springtails in there too? So they weren't completely extinct yet, just endangered. And hey, a jawbreaker's pulling a roach leg from inside the nest. Hmm, were the ants eating roach parts intended to feed the springtails? Well, here's why I would say no. Usually, I place into the plateaus of Gaia pieces of watermelon and dried up roach carcass leftovers from my other ant colonies. So I figured the ants couldn't possibly be eating the roach carcasses because first, from past experience with other trap jaw ants, the roaches were much too big to eat. Trap jaw ants prefer small bite-sized meals. And also, these roach carcasses were much too dry. Ants usually need their food to have some kind of wetness to it, which is why I usually freshly pre-kill my prey insects when feeding my ants, and don't feed dried insects. It ensures the ants can properly suck up all that gooey insect prey guts. So dried roaches? There was no way in my mind the jawbreakers were eating any dried up flesh from them. Springtails? Yes. 
and no. So for once, I placed in, just for kicks, a proper freshly killed roach part to see if the ants were willing to accept such large prey. It wasn't long before it was discovered, and a few ants came inspecting the sudden fresh roach carcass, taking a few strikes at it in various places. They seemed more intrigued and curious about the roach, as opposed to interested in its potentiality as food. I knew it was too big for them. And then? What happened next? Got me rolling on the floor laughing like crazy. Watch this. Wait for it. Wait for it. Boing! The trap jaw ant used its jaw force to chomp down on the roach's exoskeleton and in the process launched herself outwards. She stumbled around seemingly disoriented from the self-catapult. <laughs> As the ants continued to pull and prod on the roach, it was clear to me that the ants were likely trying their best to first off kill this still moving thing inconveniently on jawbreaker territory and move it out of the way. I caught one ant taking a drink from the hemolymph of the roach, but it didn't look like this roach was a popular item to the jawbreaker's palate. This made sense because again, trap jaw ants are known to feed only on tiny insects. Not huge kills like this. Or so it seemed, AC family. Because I soon saw this. Have a look, this ant here. I was surprised to watch her proceed to rip a chunk off the roach guts and proceed to carry it into the nest. Hey, wait a sec. So the trap jaw ants were able to eat from large prey, if given the chance. All right. But this still didn't explain how the ant colony was able to sustain itself for close to three months on dried roaches, and enough to increase in numbers. What was the missing character? I decided to ponder on this for a bit, and water the plateaus as I do every other night, and allowed the ants to continue doing their thing. I was determined to get some answers. In the middle of the night, I returned to the plateaus to check up on the jawbreakers. Ants were busy on the prowl. The added moisture from the watering earlier had made it ideal for the ants to dig more tunnels. I loved that they were expanding their network of canyons and anthills, and were even improving on holes in the highlands. As for the roach, the ants were still working on it. Not sure what they finally decided to do with this roach, but it did seem like they were kind of eating. But it still didn't make sense to me how a colony that was doing so well seemed to be thriving off no apparent food. I saw an ant carrying a dead member. Not sure if this was the same ant we saw earlier, but it did seem she was looking for their ant graveyard. Speaking of which, I couldn't find where their ant graveyard was. Strange. There was something going on here, AC family, and I was determined to figure out what. Little did I know, I would the next morning. And it was an incredible discovery I did not expect. It was a normal day in the plateaus of Gaia. New ant hills built overnight, bubbled from the territory's soil surface. Ants were still busy with construction, proudly building new tunnels and entrances for their growing ant colony. But what about the roach carcass? The roach guts had all dried now, but it did seem the ants managed to remove a few chunks of roach meat from it. A few ants even came to pick at it here and there. But I knew the roach would be useless to the ants now that it was all dried up it would soon join the collection of roach carcasses I added to the lands in hopes to feed the springtails. But as I began to watch the ants busying themselves from within their tunnels, suddenly, something dawned on me, hitting me like a ton of bricks. AC family, I believe I had found the missing character. What was really going to happen to this dried roach carcass? Looking at the ants now, I could never have guessed that the Jawbreakers had much bigger plans for this roach than any of us had ever imagined. AC family, watch this. I caught this ant ripping off a chunk of roach meat. It was still a bit slimy, but watch what she does. She leaves it right at the entrance and heads back to the roach. Okay. An ant smelled it, but left. Another ant came to inspect. No interest. Were they just going to leave the piece there? 
Eventually, an ant came and carried it into the darkness of the nest. The ant then manages to extract another piece of dried roach meat, and it looked like it was storing it somewhere, and then emerging to return to the roach. So they were storing the pieces of roach meat and not consuming them right away. In an ordinary case of ant versus dead prey insect, the ants would be consuming the prey insect guts and then feeding it to the rest of the ant colony via trophallaxis, i.e. mouth-to-mouth -mouth food transfer. But in this case, the ants were treating the food like a sort of item of importance. Not for eating on the spot, but for later use. Later use for what though? AC family, I had an inkling the answer lay somewhere in those tunnels. I attempted to get in and carefully uncover what was inside one of their busiest of nest entrances. But I was met with some gnashing trap jaws and aggressive ants whom I feared would climb my tweezers and show me who was boss. So instead, I started to dig and prod around. And AC family, check out what I found when I dug deep into one spot that seemed to house a lot of mites. I had hit a tunnel, then a chamber, and in that moment, I found our missing character. An old roach carcass deep in their nest? But it wasn't the sight of the roach carcass that solved the mystery. It was the springtails I spotted feasting on it. OMG, AC family, the jawbreakers were culturing their springtails underground within their nest. This was sheer ant brilliance. I covered up the chamber so they could continue to use it. AC family, this is how the ants had managed to survive all this time on dead, dried roaches. The springtails weren't gone. They were just all underground. The ants would collect pieces of dead roach and culture the springtails underground, where I imagine the springtails were much easier to catch. Wow, isn't that crazy? This was the only explanation I could think of, but it made complete sense. Mystery solved. And about the lack of an apparent graveyard in the territories, I bet the ants collect any dead ants they may find above ground and bury them underground in their springtail farms to feed the springtails, which they eat. Talk about efficiency, right? I'll have to find a way to dig around a bit more to completely verify this. But it was clear, AC family, the plateaus of Gaia turned out to be much more complex than we ever imagined. We had certain plans for the way its biological system would work, but the ants improved on our initial design and came up with something a heck of a lot cooler. This entire story has proven something we discover time and time again in the Antiverse, and that is that despite our belief that we can understand nature's principles enough to dictate how a created system would work, nature is still, and always will be, the head architect, and is the one signing off on the final blueprints. Now speaking of incredible workings happening underground, there's a new plot of soil in the Antiverse, which houses a few creatures that I am positive you guys will truly marvel at. Creatures majestic and epic that I have yet to feature on this channel. And I can't wait to show you our new incubating creatures. Yes, AC family, did you enjoy this week's episode? Don't the jawbreakers just blow your mind with their surprise plans? And also, I can't wait to show you our new arrivals in the ant room. Guys, guaranteed, you will never guess what they are. Or maybe you will, but you know the drill. Hit that subscribe button and bell icon now, so you don't miss out on next week's episode, when I reveal these mystery creatures, which have something to do with the ant kingdoms. And hit the like button every single time, including now. And hey, if you're new to the channel and want to catch up on all your Ants Canada lore, feel free to binge watch this complete storyline playlist here 
which traces the origins of all the ant colonies of the ant room, so you can follow their stories and better appreciate how these ant kingdoms came to be and why we love them so much. AC Inner Colony, I have left a hidden cookie for you here if you would like clues as to what our new mystery creatures are to be introduced in next week's episode. Maybe you'll be the first to guess correctly. And before we proceed to the AC question of the week, I'd like to plug my daily vlogging channel, Daily Vlogs, which have become a full-out bird dad channel, as I am now raising a young African gray parrot. If you love birds, I'd love for you to meet my new cute little bird. She's quite the character, loves to cuddle, is quite chatty, and is fun to watch grow up. Hope you can subscribe to our vlogs when you're there. And now it's time for the AC question of the week. Last week we asked, name one of the three things needed to be done to maintain the main island of Avista. Congratulations to Laser X Stinger, who correctly answered, one of the main things needed to maintain a vista is to water it. We also accepted shaping the branches and feeding of insects. Congratulations, Laser X Stinger, you just won a free ebook handbook from our shop. In this week's AC Question of the Week, we asked, what made it easier for the ants in this video to dig more tunnels? Leave your answer in the comment section, and you could also win a free ebook handbook from our shop. Hope you can subscribe to the channel as we upload every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video to help us keep making more. It's Ant Love Forever.